order of seekers will come to order. Mm, here, here. Thank you all for coming very much. And tonight we have a dialogue on uh, <clears throat> lessening economic greed. No more yuppies. Uh, we already talked about the philosophical events that are coming up, so why don't we proceed right to the dialogue. We have Sal Franco will play the role of the tipper, and Doug Binkley will be uh, <clears throat> speaking as a yuppie. Of course, he's not one himself. He's more of a hippie type. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, the scene is an alley behind Wall Street. Hi, good. Take your way, Sal. Typical person as yuppie. Uh, throwing away the long day's paper waste? Ugh, you scared me. Why are you doing in this alley so late at night? Actually, it was close to Mimi. But yeah. Is that going to be the tipper? Well, yeah. the, the, well, the tipper is actually the, the yuppie. Yeah. It's very confusing. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, oh. you scared me. What are you doing in this alley so late at night? Who's who now? Mr. I don't know. Who's hippie? You like this book? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I was very confused. I, I, okay, I, I'm, I'm supposed to be the yuppie, so let me just... Um, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you scared me. What are you doing in this alley so late at night? That's tippy. That's tippy. Uh, so tippy is yuppie. the same as yuppie. yuppie. Well, why is he labeled yuppie on page two and three? I'm so... That's how it's different. Can, can we start over? So yeah. Sal is the... Can we rewind that, sir? Oh, the hippie? Just, just yeah, we're, we're, gonna re, we're gonna rewind okay. it. Sal's the hippie, Doug's the yuppie. Alright. Doug's uh, also tipper. So I'm the hippie. You're the hippie. Alright. Okay, so who starts? So yeah, man. Alright. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm doing what you're forcing me to do. I am down for diving for my supper tonight. <laughs> Not only did my wife break her arm last Wednesday That's on my son's true. birthday, so it's she cannot cook for wish, so I cannot write a long dialogue tonight. But also, I have recently been fired by a current presidential candidate who shall go unnamed, uh -huh. who sent all my computer manufacturing company overseas to China for supper cheap and dehumanized labor, and then had his taxes located to Virgin Islands so that he will have to pay much less. As you all know, the economy has recently been weakened and ruined by many ways. Of course, I cannot get another job. So what else can I do except dumper, dumpster dive for my food and all else? My children face the prospects of likewise, not being able to get a job or maybe a low paying one that is not even in their areas of interest. Who knows how long all this economy and moral decline will continue? All economies predict no swift recovery and maybe a complete collapse. Who will happen? This downfall can go for, for generations. And do you know what? I blame most of this mess on you. Me? What did I do? I'm just trying to make lots of money for myself, that's all. <laughs> that's exactly it, man. It is your huge greed, selfishness, and materialism that is the root cause of the recent coming great recessions. You and other jobbies have taken far too much for yourself and left too little for us. Well, that's a huge claim. You need to prove it to me, but first, tell me what you mean by yuppie. Yuppie is an, ac an acronym for Young Upperly Mobile Professional. This term means came about in the 70s, but it continues to be prerogative today. Yeah, I it, thought you meant pejorative. <laughs> it, it came to stand or people who just wanted to make lots of money. So this term cannot refer to anyone of almost any age who has recently held positions of power, position of money, as secret claim Shipley, as Mele Shipley. Shipley. As my lady's Yahoo group, no. Wisdom Seekers, mm. August 27th. Mm. Um, I have. Continue, well, right? Oh, no, go ahead. One more paragraph. I have another big sore spot with them in, with them in the where the ones who ruined the huge shipping movement of the late 60s. Why many hippies quickly sold out to the men? I want revenge. 
in the worst way. But first, I must make my case that greed caused the Great Recession of today. Then I will maintain that we can lessen this greed so that the horrific financial events of recent decades do not happen again. <coughs> okay, problem with the word yuppie, though. Know, it's a flexible term. You know, first it applied to young people in the 70s, and I think they were the ones who did cause most of the problems. You know, they were the ones with the power and the money today and the positions to cause a lot of damage, and they did, but, but a lot of young people came along in the professions who also controlled power and money, although not as much, and did the same thing. So a yuppie is anyone, you know, <clears throat> who's about 20 in the 70s. And, uh, and, 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 and uh, went into a profession just to make money, just, just to get rich themselves. That's what a yuppie is. Any problems with that? I think it was more like the 80s rather than the 70s. Well, it was the 70s. 70s. I was in the 70s. I wasn't a yuppie. When did that well, movie come out? Hippie. I came out of the 60s. With Michael with Douglas, he personified the... Well, Yuppie. you're talking Wall about Wall Street and Gordon Gecko? Oh, that's it. Like and he said, or 88. And the key yeah, statement so. that he said in that movie was, greed is good. Greed is good. Yes. Yeah, let, me read that. Right. Well, let me read Gecko's statement. <clears throat> I am not a destroyer of companies. I am a liberator of them. He destroyed a company and made money for himself and ruined the jobs everyone else. Oh, Romney before his time. <laughs> I am a liberator of them. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Greed clarifies. Greed cut through and captures the essence of the evolutionary spirit. Greed in all its forms, greed for life, for money, for love, for knowledge, has, has marked the upward surge of mankind and greed you mark my words, will not only save this paper company, <clears throat> but all the other malfunctioning co corporate, the other malfunctioning corporation called the USA. Okay, what do you think of that statement, that greed is good? Um, he's, to me, it seems like he's saying any means to the end, and that, that's not a good... That's not a good doctrine. You know, any means to get money. Well, the point is, the invisible hand will be the best for society, don't you understand? I'm not inviting Tim in the discussion. Yes, I'm sure Tim, you know what invisible hand I'm goes. I'm sure from. Tim would agree. Where does the invisible hand go? Well, for? the greed of the individual <laughs> is results in a better society for us all. Uh, Gentlemen, me, right? there's, a great, there's a great difference between a capitalistic enterprise that helps and benefits mankind as well as itself, and a crooked enterprise ran by crooks who are governed by corporate uh, or ma by malfeasance. There's a big difference. What you happens... You yuppies crooks, would you? Not all. Maybe, maybe Gordon Gekko was. You're yeah. not talking about shadow government. Oh, no, no, wait, wait a minute. This is very important. Uh, when Greed is, was good, the last statement was made, he was talking about the role of vultures. Economic vultures like Mr. Romney fulfill the same function <laughs> Is, is the nature's natural vultures. They remove the weak and the no longer um, efficient. Many, many companies have assets that are worth more on the resale market than they are running. You can export an old loom to Brazil yeah, and use the capital here to bring up the crowd of workers to more productivity. They don't this do that. Not, yes, they, they do. do. What they do is they take the money for themselves, and then they either they buy bonds or they bank it or they use it to make money in some well, other way. Well, if they didn't buy bonds, way. money stored up in a shoebox is of no use to anyone. If the guy buys bonds or common stocks in their company, he's recapitalizing and improving the opportunity for new and more <coughs> tools. Not necessarily, he's just recycling the money. Which is exactly the point. Well, Recycling the money means it's in circulation. It's in circulation. And it means it's investing and it's growing and it's meantime, making more. People that have lost their jobs have lost them for good. And what it does after the recycling of the money takes place, um, the rich keep more of the part of the pie. If you divide up the money into sections of pies, the rich keep more of that to themselves and less of it is actually distributed to the workers what? after the vulture capitalism takes Brother place. Brother Marx in the first volume of Capital 
uh, observed directly that when there's a continuing trend of profits to decline, and they decline to the point where the capitalist will remove his capital from that wasted and intervested into a more productive unit. This is from Karl himself. Well, I have not read all of Karl Marx, but um, um, that might have been part of his analysis. However, it's irrelevant because um, nobody um, believes that Karl Marx was, you know, the preeminent um, economist or philosopher these days. Now, the money he being Carl, it's Carl viewed into, himself yeah, as a pocket. sociologist. And it's, 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 it's taking away jobs from workers and, and making the money like Gordon Gekko did. You know, he made millions by killing that corporation. But the workers were all out of their jobs. And he says that's good. That's not profitable recycling, though. That's exactly, and that's, that's not for the good society. society. I money. think you guys are forgetting a real fundamental premise of modern day capitalism. And that is companies today and in the last 150 years have been in a constant flux of change. And that a job today is not the jobs that you had after World War II. After World War II, we were the only industrial power in the world that was able to do anything. We were the only ones unharmed by the war. So we were actually in a real economic bubble in the United States right after the, for the 30 or 30 plus years after World War II. What we're seeing today is more back to normal. Well, that's what they complain about. Normality is not what they no, want to see. No, what we're complaining it. about is that the, these vulture capitalists have taken advantage of the fact that uh, they can try to claim that the, uh, the so-called um, um, free trade that's taking place uh, in the rest of the world, um, you know, and the corporation being able to ship labor overseas, uh, they can try to claim that because that exists now, that that entitles them to even gouge um, the uh, working man in this country even more. Um, even beyond what's been happening because of the uh, uh, that globalization taking place. Yeah, but Doug, I'm and old enough to remember that. Yes, there was a bubble back in the 50s. The Democrats Post themselves were the author of this policy of free trade. The that idea was to share our economy. The Clinton with the world. was so called so a new Democrat, and he went along with this, um, allowing this famous sucking sound that uh, Ross Perot pointed out would happen, which has indeed happened. Right. And this one of the things that Clinton has been vastly criticized for, and although we appreciate the fact that, uh, that Bill Clinton is um, far to the uh, left of, of a hideous monster like Romney, and we appreciate the fact that you know, maybe he's um, uh, helped to bring about at least um, an indication in the polls that we won't be stuck with a hideous, horrible monster like Romney, that certainly doesn't make Clinton a real Democrat. And Clinton was responsible for moving the Democratic Party, Democratic Party to the uh, to the right uh, by going along with horrible uh, deals like uh, NAFTA. And then we talked enough about the term yuppie. Why don't we get into some the greatest things? gift that it was ever provided by the Clinton administration was free trade. It it's has been, been a horrible thing for this country. No, it has not. It's actually caused us a boom well, beyond. This sometimes yes, it's sometimes a horrible, no. Horrible thing. Pier 1 wouldn't exist without free trade. I, I've never been in Pier 1, and I, yeah. I don't really okay. know. Nor would your cheap bicycles, nor would your cheap goods, nor would Walmart, nor would well, a lot of open up, well, opening a, up in the free yeah, trade of the sea lanes. Yeah, but the at Walmart are treated horribly. Right, absolutely. And that's they one have of, terrible and, jobs. Yes. The way I agree, and Walmart. one of the reasons it's that way is because Walmart. we're patronizing one the very store. One of the reasons it's that way is because of NAFTA, because of all these cheap... Um, um, things being built which break, of course, as soon as you use them um, and ship back here. And of course, <laughs> you know, when we run out of oil, they won't be able to ship things back from. And I contend China. there's a solution. Yeah, to, but it, go on. There's a solution as, as to as that they're too. Burning up all the oil and, and destroying our environment doing it, they can get away with it. Okay. Well, that more to come. Well, well, sooner or later, continue. we have to get away from 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 um, yeah, oil yeah, anyway. Point, I mean, it's a question of time. Oil, coal. And get on to I don't know what, but uh, I'll get away from it. No. Well, we'll never run out of wind, whether it's cold okay. wind or yeah, not. Yeah, right, Let's right. Talk about There's more material. Greed. 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 Yeah. It is my greed fundamental greed. contention that greed oh, is good. Wait, wait a second. We, I thought you wanted to go on. Well, I'll let Tim finish, and then we'll go on. That greed is good. You could also comply with greed as enlightened self-interest. And it's that enlightened self-interest 
that drives people to start businesses, that puts people to work, right. that brings that brings jobs to, to people. And if you don't think about it, sometimes the most productive people in society are those who produce actual wealth. Now, I will agree that sometimes Wall Street may not be the best way. It's been fraught with fraud and a lot of other things. But when you look at the true role of the investment bank, the revenue bond, the stock market, and the structure of the modern corporation, they are the fundamental tools that have caused capitalism and the poor around the world to rise. For without trade, without economic activity, we would still be all... You think you would you like to go back to a world of 300 years ago? I don't think so. It's I not, like my free trade. That's a strong man, Tom. Tim, excuse me. That's a strong man. I, I, I don't know go whether... Back. If you like horses, Unless you we might want to go back. I, I, don't, I don't know whether greed <laughs> is good or bad, but I do know that people are... You need some greed. Peop, that uh, most people uh, are naturally greedy. Period. Yeah. That's how it is. Mm. Yep. And most people are self-seeking. Now... Here and there we get a saintly person who rises above that. Uh, maybe Joan of Arc comes to mind. Uh, she burned for it. She, been, she burned for it, right. And there are outright, you know, outright human animals who would sooner burn up people than, than see them live. But most people are just are just natural. I mean, I naturally self-seeking. That's how it is. If you want to call it greed, self-seeking, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. and, and that percentage. includes myself. I'm not a saint. And well, I vote that we pro progress with the uh, script, Mr. Yuppie. You're next. Okay. Okay, now go ahead and show me most briefly my types. You did you, all that you claim that they did. I do have to be most brief. Among the job I will include many business yeah, people, bankers, politicians, and highly paid professionals. I blame business people for such practices as one-sided derivatives. I blame the bankers for their bad mortgages to people who could not afford them. This then led to the housing crisis in which Homeowners saw the value of their property drop many thousands of dollars at least. The banks almost led us to disaster and Obama had to bail them out with billions of dollars that he does not have. Hmm. See, well, first of all, uh, good, uh, <clears throat> good economics. Bush, Bush is the one that started the TARP program. Bush, Bush. Obama it's said. good economic policy, Tim, but yeah. Um, yeah. you have to throw greed out of there. I mean, uh, not... Um, what, 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 what should we call the spirit that causes people to go ahead and make uh, jobs for others, but not, not only making money for themselves? That's greed when you want to make money only for yourself. But, but when you want to create jobs for others... It's growth. You know? <laughs> it's called enlightened self-interest. You know, altruism. Mm. You, you, a rich man can, does not become, a rich, man does not become rich sense. without the help of others. A rich man does not become... But he exploits them. Well, no, he, they can't exploit him if they're greedy. They can't exploit him, but I do know one thing. When you work for a company somewhere and it's exploitative, you know it real quick, and the quality of his help is not as reflective as such. Now, let, let's look at this. Wealth, is that's another name for utility, whether it be a service that's invented or a product that's invented or further developed. It's utility, meaning value, that's being created. That's the definition of real wealth. Now, what happened here in the housing crisis, the government interfered with things. They made it possible and they ordered, Congress ordered Fannie Mae and Freddie to buy all these more, uh, put the uh, utility they said would be to everybody should have a single family house. So all these crooks, as you call them, they merely rushed in to do Congress's bidding. They didn't have to go aside beyond what the law said and make it um, and fraudulently um, go ahead and um, approve when people and, and encourage people to fake their income or lie about their income and then put through paperwork that showed that somebody was qualified for a loan. Well, the problem. Well, if government did not do that, 
that's illegal behavior that the that the bankers did and the people. But were, look, yeah, at all, look at all. Look at all the industries that and these finance and companies did. That that was illegal behavior. You can't blame that on the government. Look at all the industries that benefited from the home growth. You had carpenters at work. You had cement layers, brick layers. But that was a bubble. You had electricians. That, that was a bubble. Yeah, wait, wait. You had the industry cutting down trees, bringing in the trees for the construction of the homes. You had all the appliance industry putting appliances in the homes. You know, you had a lot of things going on. A lot of people benefited from this. Uh, construction boom. It was Unfortunately, a it, was part of the business it wasn't cycle properly that... financed, but the thing is, today, you have a lot of people better off mm -hmm. than they would have been if they kept the money in a vault and not invested yeah. it. No, people are worse off in because the of the business cycle. Think of all the Lexus and the BMWs that were sold to the cycle. families of mortgage bankers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are some good things that come out of, you know, unfortunately, there are there are some risks at it, but you know. Without uh, proper regulation, <coughs> without proper regulation, without proper planning, so that the business cycle uh, does not have this incredible sine wave uh, uh, problem of very <coughs> large peaks and large valleys, you have these incredible dislocations of society, like we've had with the Great Recession. Right, and that's the function. That of, is the problem. The function of government in a capitalist society is to regulate and make sure we don't have these. It should regulate. And yeah, under these, the Bush these. administration, the regulation just went was non-existent. Yeah, right. See, I look at it like Obama this. Obama has not fixed the problem. But the yeah. Bush yeah. Yeah. I look at it like this. Capitalism in its pure form is like a good, well-run football game. You have a lot of people, you know, butting heads, getting their touchdowns, the whole things. But you have to have good referees right. to catch the penalties. Right. When we don't have good referees, we have chaos. Right. And the way I look at it now, you want minimal regulation, but you want those regulations enforced. You want... <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. You you want regulations you want regulations enforced. You want uh, you basically want people to to you know go along with the system and if there's a you know say a guy if 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 your Green Bay Packers are representing some mega corporation and they were getting the scoring by you know injuring the other players through fraudulent means we'd want the penalties enforced especially in a game of football. And I think a lot of the banking crisis that we've had is we had a few well-placed teams that were not following the rules properly. Right. And that's what caused a lot of things. And right now we're living with the repercussions of the referees not doing their job properly, which is what we had a lot of fraud in it. I don't condemn the system itself. I condemn some of the enforcement done by the referees of that system. But nobody understood the game. You can't have no, referees. No. Derivatives, nobody understood the repercussion. It, it was the banks that went to the government in the end and it says, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're under a virgin, yes they did. They're under virgin disaster. Government, save us from ourselves. Because they played around with these derivatives, they took parts of, of these uh, mortgages and this guy got some and this right. guy got some. And then they were all over the place and then they all came due yep, and nobody could cover it. So, you know, the, the banks caved in, and uh, we kind of went free market, but like you say, they couldn't we manage themselves. We're you know, not, they didn't put enough uh, we safeguards didn't, in. If we and didn't, government isn't always the answer. The government is there no. for a safety net for people. You know, if the people really aren't supposed to live off Social Security. They're supposed to have pensions, and the Social Security is supposed to supplement the pensions. Hard. Things are so disastrous in the economy that people are having to live off their pensions. If you I mean, what? Social Security, I mean, and they have no pension impact. But, uh, so at any rate, you know, we, we saw it, we saw it, uh, this thing with uh, savings and loan years ago. Yes, right. Where they got to remove the rules of, uh, of uh, accounting or whatever, uh, regulation. They had a free-for-all. They said, hey, you know, people are going to, we, these are all secured, so hey, we'll give money here, there, and everywhere. And then they said, oh, they're bad loans. We're not going to, you know, who would have had to pay up the ante? 
the I U.S. Think, uh, I think citizens. The, I think the problem is we're not letting these institutions go bankrupt in the first place. Right. And I think a lot of what happens is if you have risk and they're willing to make these risky loans, they better pay the piper when yeah, they want to go bankrupt. Yeah, but what do they say? We're too big to fail. Yeah, but you see, you yeah, missed out on a point. If the people who were <coughs> investing in these mortgages were using money that came about through the creation of real wealth, that is utility, they would have been more prudent in, in underwriting these loans. What we had here was the government pushed the button on the printing press mm -hmm. at Fannie Mae and that, and they said, go. Mm -hmm. So everybody went. It wasn't just Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Huh? It was Citibank. Well, that's so or, there was some uh, it was Wells yeah. Fargo. It was Washington Mutual. Now Almost Bank of huh? How about it's called yeah, securitization it's rather than uh, responsibility? I think that's what really caused the problem. Many players, including the government, were responsible for the problem, led problems that led to the Great Recession. We're, we're talking it's, about how no, one, no one's hands are clean. Responsible. How can we make them responsible or accountable for what they do? Enforce public the, shame. You force the you penalties hit. for fraud right. and criminalized acts. Yeah. It is an old <coughs> that I've been holding back. It's an old and well known phenomenon, quote unquote, in the hood, that if I go into a liquor store and steal $100, I might spend 10 years in jail. But if you or one of you defraud a company of $100,000, a million dollars or more, you may get a slap on the wrist and get sent to the club fed if you go to jail at all. So the first thing one has to talk about is enforcement of the law. Thank heavens for white skin. If it was simply done if certain people went to jail and did hard time, I mean hard, hard time. Absolutely. We wanted then to Then you might see some of these people who are so inclined. I've worked in the industry. You know, I can, as Peter can tell you and some other people can tell you, I can go chapter and verse about collusion and fraud in the real estate and the banking industry. Not off my mouth documentation on paper. So if some of these laws were enforced, if you got to the root of the collusion between you taking the money but we're also locker mates at the country club and you know my kids, and I say, look, you don't want to really want to see me go in jail because then I might have to talk about how you cheated on your wife or defrauded on your income taxes, so why don't you give me a pass? If we look at pardons issued by various governors of the state and presidential, part, presidential pardons, we begin to see a pattern, which would be very easy to discern. Are these books so in the us enforce the laws don't necessarily need laws. It's like gun laws. You don't need any new laws. You need to enforce what's out there before you talk about doing something else. So that's one of my two cents. Yeah, well, I, I think we have another problem, too. Uh, we're speaking about um, government like it's a, a, a neutral, objective third party. It isn't. The government is made up of, of, of very successful, wealthy capitalists. I mean, you can't... You know, it's, it's, Mar Marxism is Mar Marxism is is out of it when they're talking about the dictatorship of the proletariat. You can't have some street cleaner become secretary of state or a mine worker becoming um, uh, secretary of the treasury. Like Walensa did it. Yeah, it won't work. No, a street cleaner might clean things up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> in, in, in practice. A philosopher, there we go. Plato wanted, uh, back to Plato. Uh -huh. We practice it as a problem, Plato. but... It never would happen. Go ahead. We generally depend on our public servants to actually be public servants, and um, the hope is that people, if they're in a position, for example, like an attorney general, that they would actually enforce the laws. And uh, we don't know if there's some kind of a... Uh, if, if Obama has said to Holder to go easy on these people and don't enforce the laws against them, hopefully that isn't the case, but there could be all sorts of um, influence that has caused Holder to give J.P. Morgan, etc. a pass. Now this is a terrible thing. We, we hoped and expected that there would be perp walks and that many of these people that were responsible for the Great Recession would be in jail already. Uh -huh. We wish that would have happened. but. Um, it hasn't because there is that big problem of money in government 
and money and campaigns, and that's a whole separate issue. It's, you Government know, so is money. There are very um, heavy political issues that are at the core of some of the problems that we have with uh, the business cycle because of um, the influence of greed and the influence of money in politics. Mm. The government uh, is yeah. run and led by people that are uh, too much influenced by it. But, yes. but Doug, you're overlooking the point that the, that the purpose or the reason for the philosophy of the, uh, of the hidden hand of Adam Smith is Go that when people, <laughs> when people are dealing with real value, their own earned money, this whole discipline that's imposed through the whole economy removes the need for regulation by law because the people are making prudent decisions. We have the application. That's a canard. Of, uh, people don't always make prudent decisions. And well, the assumption don't. that economists do has been proven wrong. I mean, psychological well, loss. I know this, but there, there's an effort to do so. And the point is that, well, here, as Thomas Jefferson said in the Declaration of Independence, speaking why King George was unfit to be the prince of a free people, one of the things he details is that he has sent a swarm of officers into our midst to eat out our sustenance. This is what's happened. And one of the reasons behind the present collapse is all these bureaucrats, even the ones that are doing our conscientious job that's assigned to them, are nonetheless not truly creating genuine value. And the, if the surplus value, the difference between the cost of production and the market value of that is beaten, being eaten up by these bureaucrats. Well, if I, this money had been available for the reinvestment in society producing real new value, this would not have happened. And he's right. Well, that's ridiculous. You had inflated value due to the business cycle, and, and that became a bubble, and that the was the cause. Yeah, but that the was the cause of the came collapse. Up, there's One of the major causes of the collapse. That financing makes the deal. You pay more for your Buick on the used car lot because the money's available. That's what happened with that damn but button that was pushed at the Federal Reserve. Which button are you referring to? Oh, you keep the going back. Printing to printing. Printing. Nah, it's Quantitative easy. easing, I think, is what he's referring yeah, yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quantitative easing was there to try was to, no end to, to it. try to rescue this society from the Great Collapse after it happened. That was quite, that's but quantitative But it would have been, could have been prevented by internal discipline. Well, yes, that you know, you had actually people that said there was. Uh, unabashed exuberance or something. Um, yeah. Irrational that was before exuberance. This. Irrational. Yeah. Okay. But you see, I'm, and, what I'm saying and is... So they were aware, I'm but they didn't do anything about these it. These conditions right. that were put created the by politics... To prevent that sine wave from going too high, too high, too high the, peak. These conditions that were created by politics, like that printing there. press money and all of that, yeah. went against the principles of human nature. Mm. We, so we complain <coughs> about that... Yeah. that the people didn't do the right thing. Well, that's the way us, you know, well, you, you we're, all wearing the, we're all wearing this clay skin. That well, we've got to be better than that because otherwise we'll just be destroyed and get our um, experience kicked ever, ever, Doug, over and over again like every this. generation. In a, in a truly free market, if a company's cheating people, they're going to lose customers and they're going to go out of business. Okay? That's the ideal. But it's not exactly the ideal. I've seen it happen. all the time. As a matter of fact, in the dot-com world, you know, I've seen it more, more than once. I worked for a company that was really good for a long time, and then all of a sudden they started scamming their vendors and scamming people, and within a year they were, their reputation was ruined. We're not talking about cheating, now. we're talking about greed. Well, we go not, just, not just greed, but I mean, there, there's a different, there's greed in two forms. Greed is good. <laughs> greed, greed is good in a sense of enlightened self-interest that the money is morally and ethically made. Uh, greed, is, greed in a bad sense is formed if you take the shortcuts and are and, and, and cheat to get it. We all know what most greedy people do. Yes, yes. That's how. That's what greed leads to. You can't. You can't say greedy people have maybe, enlightened maybe, self-interest. Maybe, They're not greedy if they have enlightened self-interest. Moral and ethical is uh, that's being, a def, is the not opposite. Being greedy. Greed is not moral. Yeah, greed is not greed moral. Is not. Exactly. Well, it's Period. also known as one of the seven deadly sins, right? Oh. 
well, pride society, and greed. Society and religion, too. Yeah, but greed is kept in is check by, by, the, by right. other honest men right. who are part <laughs> of the be. deal. It ought to be. No, it ought, it ought to be it what is. is. It, it, it is if you got a couple of people things. bargaining with real value to exchange real value, yeah. you don't have this problem. Yeah. Right. Well, if you have cheaters uh, and greedy people <laughs> in there. If you, you have do. greedy people, yeah, but, they, they're but their be greed was unchecked because the system was yeah, unbalanced. I know that. I know that. And it isn't capitalism. Action. It's it's called it's yeah. called mercantilism is what we have here. No, and what we have is unbridled no, capitalism. capitalism. No, it's not. It's unbridled. Cap it's not yeah. unbridled capitalism. <laughs> it's what we call you. market mercantilism, as Adam Smith puts well, it. Well, whatever you want to call it. Mercantilism was a system of fixed prices. Right. Yeah. So how can you call this mercantilism? Uh, basically, because of the power being in the hands of some corporate entities that yeah. that that don't let people and look at the barriers to entry in some of some industries. You're absolutely right, but still in all mercantilism. Maybe not mercantilism, and fixed but fixed exchange rates. I'm talking about. All right. Maybe let's just talk about monopolistic. All right. I think that might be the term I'm more looking for. All right. And don't, did, did 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 we not go through that with Teddy Roosevelt already and the trust laws? Yeah. Well, yeah, but the Sherman Antitrust okay. Act is, was trust a mere Well, you know, you might want to ramp it up here. and add a term which uh, comes from the old textbook I think everybody's heard. You might want to ramp it up to state monopoly capitalism. Ooh. You know. Well, Karl Marx disapproved of financial capitalism, but not really industrial capitalism. Yeah, but you can't always, yeah. you know, lay everything on or off on Marx because, right. you know, I'm not Marx actually Marx. came out advocating uh, colonialism. Yes, Marx was a keen observer of human nature. He was a sociologist, not an economist. Point taken. Yeah. His two most critical, uh, or critics, a uh, German by the name of Weber and a Frenchman by the name of Durkheim, uh, thoroughly examined all of his work. It's amazing to read this stuff and see that at the beginning of the mid-19th century, <coughs> how accurate he was, and he's describing even the modern circumstances of collapse. He's describing the capitalism, Marx is describing the capitalism of his day. No, today, the principles are the same. It's eternal. That's what makes an eternal principle. Which is what? Totally what is he eternal? What he, is talked eternal? About, he talked about how the, ex how should I put it? He talked about the system, how things collapse because of the lack of creation of genuine value, which is another word for surplus value. You take so much labor, so much uh, constant capital called depreciation, and you put them together and you hope that you sh if it's done right, you should have created a product that had greater value than the inputs. All it takes is you just look at my camera here that, that I'm recording with, and you can find this was actually made by Panasonic, made in Malaysia with parts from all over the world, put together in China, refurbished in Mexico. Some of these workers commit suicide. So, so made, made in all over the world. and. Less than 175 bucks for my purchase price. It's got more power in it than a normal TV camera ever did. But how many people starved to make it? I don't think anybody really starved to make it. Workers throw the snow out of windows in China. Oh, that that's that's Foxconn, and that that's that there are there are instances of it. But I'll tell you this: sweatshops are an essential part. To a building of, of a capitalism? Cap of a capitalistic economy. Oh, you admit it. Oh, wow. I admit it because <laughs> sometimes. Oh, why are why yes. are people why are people? There's a moral high ground for you. Why don't we get the whips and, why don't we get the whips and chains out there? No, no. <laughs> I mean, no. Let's bring back <laughs> slavery. Let's, I mean, look, let's just bring back slavery. Huh? Be, Come let's on. Be quiet. <laughs> if we want to talk about that, let's do this. Okay. Uh, okay. Himmler's SS economists sat down and computed the cost. Did lifespan cost analysis as to how what is the minimum amount of food versus the maximum amount of labor you could get out of people in concentration they were, they camps. They were great capitalists. So Total I mean, food. yeah, I mean, if you, yeah. if you want to look at if you want to look at it that way, I mean, probably the best. I mean, the found it less, you know, not to beat this old tired drum, but Perfect. let's look at the economic foundations of this thing. What it was built upon, all the companies, directly and indirectly, which benefited from. All the various forms of exploitation we know, the African, the the African slave yep. trade, what companies <coughs> America, Europe, it made. 
So if you want to look at just the bottom line, you can say it's more efficient. Let's look at Prison Industries Incorporated. I mean, it's great. I mean, we have laws which can lock up a bunch of people who make a work for 10 cents an hour. Okay. And, you know, we have a very productive, I mean, let's just face it, fascism, okay, in its idealistic sense, I mean, Mussolini made the Italian trains run on time. So right, let's yeah, go yeah. to the a... The Tea Party would love it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. hey, yep. let's dust well, out George Orwell. Today, let's, let's all stop. of Chicago enjoys the but, surplus value created by digging that canal at 15 cents an hour. Wow, that was... And, back then. You know, I, I was, Hitler kind of pulled yeah, Germany well, out of an economic oh, yeah, spin well, it was because uh, they developed there was the because of capitalism the, that it got well, there. Well, it was they were in ruins during the twenties. So when he got to the thirties, and Hitler got in, he built you know the war machine. He built the Volkswagen, <laughs> which is still around today. Yeah, Autobahn. Autobahn. <laughs> and you know, he, so. In a way, yeah. until he got into the war, he was doing some good things for the German people. He even had the Olympics there. Yeah. And right. he was he showing was off for, Germany for to the war. Germans. My I mean, kindergarten teacher went to the 1936 hot. Olympics. Yeah. But ask the, but ask the people so you think you know, but ask the people houses were, yeah, great houses great were she taken, she you know, those houses were confiscated. Yeah. yeah. And the money, you know, where did this, I mean, it's... I mean, we, I mean, this is all chapter and verse. I mean, I'm yeah, not talking out of school. You know, he also got this money by robbing the German Jews. Yes, exactly. German Jews. And today I was really shocked when I read that no less a person than Thomas Jefferson sat down and figured how much money he's making off of each of his slaves, and particularly his the slave children. Um, which I thought was just dreadful, you know. Like he was a founding his, father. The founding yeah, father. He was forking and he refused, <laughs> and Jefferson, unlike Washington, Maybe more than one. refused to emancipate his slaves. Yeah. Well, he was a capitalist. slaves had large garden plots behind their huts. What difference does that make? Because they couldn't be buried in his family garden plot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Good point. I didn't know that. Right, well, to this day. And, and so, yeah, let's, let's so move on, on please. There's some answers. We have to okay. face the fact that people... Mm. How do we deal with this greed? Well, this horrible we'll greed. cheat and murder mm. and I don't know. rob to make another buck. Yeah, so what can we do about it? to pick up the dialogue. Uh, uh, hippie, uh, I think you mentioned uh, politicians also acting like yuppies. Uh, well, how so? They basically did nothing to prevent businesses and banks from such greedy and unethical practices. Many politicians are on the tape from no, them really. so they can line their pockets <laughs> from lobbies and the like for their super expensive Who's campaigns. Seen? Finally, many recent politicians in an attempt to get reelected kept doing programs they could not afford. So they had to keep borrowing money from mostly China to pay bills for this. The interest alone can kill the economy. Future generations will have to pay it for us. That surely is wrong and greedy on the part of the Japis. I assert that the capitalist system of economy leads to greediness and sheer materialism. Okay, well we did talk about political greed a lot. I think so we've we beaten that horse to death. Yeah, I think so. But that is a, that last statement isn't necessarily true there. It has to lead to greediness. Uh, it's it's also untrue that we it, it can lead to a lot of good. It, it happened, though. It happened in the U.S. Well, well, we have to have a socialist um, listen, agenda in order to listen. The we were fine. With, hand. <laughs> we were fine with Clinton when he left office. Yeah. In the year 2000, we had a I surplus. Say that. Surplus, yeah. But then George Bush came along, and you know he didn't know what to do for several months in office. But guess what? In 2001. 9/11, we were attacked. That was wonderful. Now we, now he has an excuse for a war. Now he can put Halliburton in the picture, and they can get some money for Cheney. And somehow, I'm sure Bush probably profited from it too. So now we got a 10-year war fighting in Iraq, and then thing, we're also in Afghanistan. And then, well, we were, we started in Afghanistan, then we went to Iraq, and there were no uh, weapons of mass destruction. We didn't get the oil, but Halliburton, I'm sure, profited, got billions of dollars from the U.S. government for just helping out over there. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure 
you know, the, the industries that supported the military, they profited too from, yeah. you know, the bombs and the shells and, and the guns. Right here in Illinois, the rocket Depleted the uranium too. So that's where we that. really went over the edge. It wasn't, didn't happen, Obama inherited that, but it was during Bush's administration. We went way over the edge. And what George Bush's uh, rear, rear end is going to be on the back side. What of most of you guys forget, Ross, though, yeah. is what a <laughs> what a what a good system capitalism and greed of capitalism actually really is. Well, it can be good, <laughs> but yeah, good unfortunately, luck. <laughs> but in its pure sense, but the greed is a problem. And uh, he says the material, sure materialism. Oh, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you the also? Love of wealth. Would you, wouldn't, wouldn't you also say that democratic government is very inefficient, very corrupt, and very much uh, along the same lines as our, our modern capitalistic system to a certain the, the degree? Corruption yeah, well, comes a lot from the capitalism well, because of the money in politics. Well, wait, are you going back to the major, the, the depression, the Great Depression of the 30s? When, I'm not going back to the when depression. When Hoover just walked away and he said to Roosevelt when he got going to the inauguration, there is nothing left to be done. <laughs> but That's Roosevelt brought in John Maynard Keynes and he gave him the, the policy that's kind of befouling today about how government can affect uh, what's going on in the must, private yeah, sector must, and must state. Be people. Well, yeah. well I'm, I'm, be, I'm beginning to lean more along the lines of what John Galt said in the book Atlas Shrugged, that we're becoming a nation of moochers and relying too much right. off government aid, not so much the individual person, but the modern corporations themselves to their corruption. Well, well, oil company that. subsidies are... Yeah. Reason, right? Well, let's not talk politics all now. Let's get to some answers. Let's get some answers. So we oh, well, the on. answers involve politics, Bob. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Well, you have to remove uh, money from politics, and that's why we yeah. need a, we need a uh, an amendment to the Constitution. Well, how do we do that? I think you, involves, There's two ways to do it. The uh, Congress has to approve. Uh, uh, by two thirds, and then the states have to approve by three quarters, or uh, constitutional conventions can uh, approve in enough states. And I don't know what the That's limit is. Happen. Perhaps our scholar would know, but uh, uh, conventions <laughs> in the various That's states, a uh, sufficient number of them approved, then you can get an amendment that way. It's never been done before. Uh, <coughs> but uh, the original Bill of Rights was approved in that way. It was approved by the various states, um, the legislatures. Why not okay, just why not the actually <coughs> conventions? Go ahead. But, Okay. Why not just bring a king back into the United States and he can, by edict or fiat, fix yeah. the system? Well, we don't need that. The democratic system, small d, can work. And one of the problems has been the filibuster, and that's just an, an anachronism of history, really. It was trotted out by the Republicans to try to uh, prevent reform from happening. You see what you just said? Democratic, small d, can work. Well, it can. You see, it's the not, thing I, is, I, I like... That it can. I, my support of capitalism is much like things. Democracy is the worst form of government, except for all the others. Well, that's a good Capitalism bite, but... is the worst form of economic system, except for all the others. Well, socialism worked pretty well. It's worked, worked, worked very well for Sweden, uh, Norway. Um, it's a mixed uh, system. No, it's, had, it's a mixed it's, system. It's they just had more government. It's had some flaws in some of the some other government. countries because of the effect of the global um, uh, business cycle um, hitting, hitting bottom. Um, but uh, but um, the, the so-called socialist governments of, of Norway and Sweden are doing just they're fine. They're not socialistic. And no, they're not socialistic. They're, they're, they're quite they're, socialistic they're, compared to the United States. They're they're more, they're more, they're more, there's more government they're, subsidy they're for support of their citizens. They're not espousing socialism, but they, are, um, they have a lot of the, uh, the characteristics. It's also, a matter of degrees of what you they're consider. Doing, they were doing just fine, and they're still doing fairly fine. Okay, Mark, Mark's made a point that socialism can't work without free market. <laughs> so, now, what do you propose to do to lessen what you think is my unrelenting wrongful greed? In a nutshell. In a nutshell. As a monarchist, Bob. Of course, I propose a return to the hippie values of love. <laughs> Peace and understanding, but not too hard drugs and unlimited sex. In the world. We need to escape from our yeah, father's with electric pool aid, <laughs> trip as Tom well, Wolf put it. We can find happier and more fulfilling lives through cooperation, at least as hippies had great values, that we still need to apply to the world of money. There's one and out of room there, yeah. Hmm. Thanks, money, right? 
Oh, pause and discuss again. Oh my yeah, goodness. Right, right. What's wrong, with, What's wrong with hard drugs and unlimited sex? I don't know. <laughs> I can agree with the hippie on that one. Capitalism has evolved in trust. You have to trust somebody that's exchanged money. Oh, uh, you do? On yes, you do. A really? good set of scales if you got proper money. <laughs> good set of scales. Uh, even if you're drug dealers, you still have the guys with guns to enforce it. they got to trust each other to come up and exchange, you know, they'll check the quality, they'll check the thing, he don't want to get scammed, but there's still a certain level of trust. Once you have an honest transaction, you trust each other, you do business together, and more money flows and changes hands. Mm -hmm. There is a code. Yeah. But you, you know, know there's, 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 there's trust, considerable cheated, discipline so involved. Yes. That if you cheat in your deal, and he trusts you that there's actually so many kilos of a certain grade of whatever, you know, you can be caught on the street corner a week later, and you're no more. Uh, yeah. that's, so that's a discipline on even that system. That's correct. And that's the type of discipline we need on this system now. So maybe that's what but should who? happen to some of the people from Bank of America or whatever. Yeah, uh, they should be uh, the street Romans, justice to the them. The right? used to do a right. thing. They grab, what is it, decimation. They grab every tenth member of the Legion and mm -hmm. slay them. So maybe we should go down, you know, just grab some of the, you know, employee right. and grab, okay, you guys are... I mean, you're very <coughs> so be a great thing for Obama's second term, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, well, I've always said that yeah. if I were elected emperor, my first executive order the next morning would be to the purchasing agent for 20,000 sharp axes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, not for you. But I want well, to love say peace and about understanding. It. Well, that love, peace, and understanding that could that make a, well, a fair economy. I economy, want to say uh, something uh, about nice that. Reading one. Okay, go ahead. Is that one of the things that is not mentioned in this paragraph with regards to the wow. hippies is that the, the thing that really kind of made it available or triggered this uh, love, peace, and understanding was the commune type living. Yeah. They lived, basically, the hippies, you know, I kind of came out of that generation. I was 20 in 1969, and you know, in the 70s, basically, it was the war years up to about 73. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we were all very young and of limited means. And, you know, it was kind of like uh, uh, that, you know, the, the world of the parents, of the government, they called it the establishment in those days, you know. It was a, a thing to rebel against because people were getting drafted left and right for the war. And there, there were, and a lot of kids were worried about their futures, you know, am I going to have a future, am I going to die in Vietnam? And, no problem. You know, he had no draft problem. card burning and people going to Canada. So, because of their limited means, you know, it seemed like commun uh, living was, seemed to be the best answer. And really, it was kind of based on what they had done in Israel, called the kibbutz, where people gathered together and they shared responsibilities. and. Uh, uh, child rearing uh, responsibilities and you went out and worked and you, and you had a meager income but you brought it back to the kibbutz and everybody put their money together and they kind of lived comfortably uh, as a community. So that was the thing that really made hippie living possible. Well, they had all the orgies and the pot parties. Uh, yeah, I, I thought some of them were to just, lesser extent. just nuts. <laughs> I mean, what a friend of mine pointed out, what is the point of not taking a bath? And what are you, what are you proving? Or, Saving the water. Some of them were really, uh, really out of it. Even bath water makes good irrigation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They used to be so stinky, I remember. Some of them. <laughs> Well, that's enough for Some the, of the kids uh, produced good wine too. We, yeah, but along did, again, did you do good uh, Well, good even I do recall being taught in good my good Christian good churches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm glad I don't go anymore. <laughs> that greed is particularly a wrong thing, <laughs> especially to that, um, uh, who was it, Jesus and St. Paul? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I guess so. Uh, I seem to remember hearing that, yeah. He had many harsh words to say to the rich in external things, but poor in spiritual ones. And if I want to get to heaven, I suppose I'd better stop being so greedy and selfish or disregarding others, huh? <laughs>
Really? So how about that, the religious way of producing mm. greed? Is that going to work? I'm so scared. <laughs> yeah, you're burning heaven hell Oh forever. my goodness. Well, of course I can always use Pascal's wager and recant on my deathbed and recant on. We tell us say you're doing good when God will save you. Or, well, I don't, well, well, you're hurting others. Uh, well, well, I can do it all my life and then yeah. recant on my deathbed. Well, well the truth of the matter is, is good, lucky me. The truth of the matter is, I think in Italy in the Middle Ages, you used to be able to buy an indulgence. So there was no, there <laughs> there's were, that there too. Were, there, were, there, were, there were actually lists. So if you sure. could get as greedy and as sinful as you'd like, and there was a price, you'd go to the church and say, hey, you know, here's. 10,000 ducats for the mortal sin I committed last week. The yeah, Catholic, Catholic Church has always been the height of morality. Yeah, no, very corrupt. Long Is there any Luther. spiritual way Long to get rid of Luther greed and less than greed? Any spiritual, spiritual way? That's not corrupt? That. Yeah, yes, excuse me. It says, uh, oh, quarter Christians had uh, cooperatives and uh, lived in community for since the early Christians. Too. Well, the Amish, my Amish, do and the Amish, Amish still yeah. exist, and Hyde yeah, Park has some co-op, and co-op bookstores, yeah, and uh, a couple of co-op markets, of for food 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 supermarket. Food. Yeah, closed a long time ago. But, but you need some big money behind those efforts, or they'll never take hold. Either government support, or big money behind it, or cooperative. The cooperative movement will shrivel and die. If those activities are creating value, why do you need money, government money behind them? And the truth of the matter is that very few people are going to sell all they have and give their money to the poor. You were in the army, right? Mm -hmm. So That's this it. street would look like the PX on an army base if, if, if government were to run commercial um, enterprise. And some people be happy, and some people would be right. unhappy. Our PX made a profit. Did they? Yes. Yeah. I don't. Know. Can the feds make a profit? Yes, they can. Okay. All right. I'm too used to the post office. Um, if you're on an, it's, it's a, it's a losing. post office is forced to deliver to everybody. So Right. They can't right. just they can pick never, and choose and say, "Well, you're in the wilds of right. Wyoming. We're not delivering it's a to you." Public service. So oh, I yeah, have bottom part of two just along the run. Right. Well, obviously, obviously what's required here is a highly regulated, as highly regulated supervised capitalist system. A um, friend of mine said that, that so he's speaking about Hitler, that, you know, if you, you, you start shipping uh, your your capitalist, you establish uh, your factory overseas. There'll be a knock on the door at midnight, and the stormtroopers will come in and haul you away. You can't do that. You have to plow your money back into the German economy. Mm. Well, that that was national socialism well, in a big way. So, well, as I say, either government gets behind commercialism, <laughs> or big money gets it's behind cooperatives. That's the only two ways uh, the, the soci uh, socialist uh, slash commercial system could be and um, operate, operative. I'm going to ask you guys one question. What is the major export of the United States? <laughs> Computers. Technology. <laughs> Capital. What would, I, what would I do if I told you it was security? What kind of security? Keeping the sea lanes open, oh, maintaining military. free trade. Yeah, <laughs> free trade. Keeping the uh, <laughs> keeping pi overseas piracy down. Mm -hmm. Making sure that international contracts and and uh, international waters are safe for the passage of uh, commerce. Policing the entire Middle East. To a large degree, that's exactly what we've been exporting for quite a while. And that's why our military budget's one of the largest in history. We've been actually taking over the functions of world policemen so that the economy can keep free. And if you want to know what happens when we don't have it, look at what happened right after World War I. London, England, before World War I. There's a quote from a book called the... Um, Put that on yourself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I see you're saying this. It's called, uh, from a book called um, the, the Commanding Heights. A man in London could make a reasonable call 
call, could make a phone call and expect the goods of the world to be delivered to his door within days. That's what free trade did. For Britain? For Britain and most of the world mm -mm. at that time. However... Uh, the British Empire. However, with the assassination of one Archduke Ferdinand, Ferdinand. that collapse Sarajevo. in Sarajevo set us back and shut the world down for about 75 years. It did not reopen again until the collapse of the Berlin Wall. Everybody said capitalism, capitalism, capitalism. Well, it was, you know, it was a spread of freedom. Where capitalism fails is that it, if it's not done properly, in a lot of these countries, the infrastructure of capitalism was not put into place. See, to get a fully functioning capitalist economy, for example, you know, this is my wallet. How do you know it's my wallet? Well, number one, the duct tape and the loud flash on it, which is a little <laughs> bit of a branding part. Okay. You want, my, if you drop it niece, on the street, you want everybody to say, that's just some cockamamie piece of junk. I'm not going to pick that up. No, no, no. Well, it's, it's in your possession. It's you in my back possession. You a day later and say, hey, yeah, there's the wallet. You know, but, got my money. Wallet. Yeah, well, my, 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 my niece made Clever okay. idea. Okay, so. Uh, let's, 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 just, let's try this, okay? <laughs> Whose bottle of V8 juice is this? <laughs> the Lord's. How do we know it's your bottle of V8 juice? You don't. You don't. Mm -hmm. But we just assume that you bought it, you put it on the table, and everybody knows by fiat it's yours because you probably drank out of it or... Nobody wants it. <laughs> or something like that, right? right. <laughs> now, that establishes ownership. And most goods of the world, like a car, a house, or something like that, the real value of those goods are expressed in the abstractions that they represent. For example, with a car, you have a title. That title is done in a government database and everybody trusts it to imply ownership. So therefore you can buy a car from across the world or across from another dealership and you know it's yours once you register the title with the state. Likewise the same thing with land and land grants and trusts and titles. That's what causes the real value of land is what it can be exchanged for and you have a common methodology of registering uh, things for it. In a book uh, by the Mystery of Capital by Hernando de Soto, he simply says one of the reasons that a lot of countries aren't why, capital, why capitalists in the West succeed and others don't is that we don't have the ownership of capital quite down to a thing yet. You know, when somebody buys a house, most of the people know in the neighborhood whose it belongs to, but there might not be an official government record where he can actually get a loan or sell it or buy it or whatever. And that is what we call dead capital because it can't be monetized or mortgaged. And that's where the, it's what the system of property rights and databases and systems and all that stuff in, involves is it lets you get value. Even if you go onto eBay or do something like that, you have the infrastructure of the PayPal payments, you have the infrastructure of the eBay marketplace, you have the infrastructure of the buyers and the system and an enforcement mechanism through the, through, you know, their, their, things like that. So there is like a, it's a regulated marketplace to a certain degree. You, you don't get on eBay and, and commit fraud very long without being either shut down or tons of negative feedback. That is how capitalism really works. There's a certain infrastructure in place like property rights, like rule of law, like free freedom of government and the like. And that's what really causes the system to work. When it doesn't or those underpinnings get corrupted, or there's doubt in terms of ownership, that's when the system starts collapsing. And I think in a lot of cases, what we saw under the Bush administration, like you said, was a collapse of the rule of law with a lot of the companies and a lot of the, and a lax enforcement of, sta of standards of credit that were done by banks. And that was because the incentives were there. They could approve the loan, then they could sell the loan off right away and not have to worry about it. If they had to finance and take care of their own loans, they would have been much more prudent in the guidance of the credit system. What happened? Securitization. They could sell the loan off to somebody else and they would be responsible for the payments. That's why we really had a lot of the nutshell on the problem. Derivatives? Yeah, new financial instrument for the banks to make money. Nobody can understand it. It's just a representation of a representation. Basically a poker chip. You're not adding any value. Insurance of derivatives, another gimmick. 
CDOs. So CDOs, yeah. Th there was the question is, who is fraud, going yes. to, who is going to enforce, who's going to oversee and, and enforce these regulations? Part of it's part of it's government. Part of it's going to be the market itself. Well, apparently the government's not doing a very good job, is it? Not at all. It's doing a terrible Eric, job. Eric Holder, right? Well, Eric Holder is partly responsible. Who's appointed to? He's the trade. he's the Who's officer in charge of that. Yeah. And even if Obama has told him to go easy on the banks, he could have said after he was confirmed, "It's my obligation to enforce the law. These laws are on the books, and I'm going to go after those bankers and the people in." Um, the other uh, organizations that uh, gave out these loans fraudulently, and at least the worst players, you know, people that um, approved hundreds of mortgages where the uh, evidence was obviously fraudulently, uh, people could not possibly have had these uh, incomes that they were reporting, et cetera, et cetera. And he could have gone after those people. Let me chime in on something. Yeah. Uh, around that time, the uh, Mortgage industry had a term for a loan. It was called a ninja loan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, no income. income. <laughs> okay, you know what I'm talking about. Etc. Right. Yeah. yeah. Holder could have gone after those people after he was confirmed. He, could not, he right. wouldn't have been impeached. Uh, Obama. Uh, really, I don't think he could have done it. He wouldn't have fired him. I don't think because that would have, you know. He was his own creature. I yeah, I, I think Holder could have. I think Holder could have uh, done those prosecutions, but. Um, it's very unfortunate that he didn't. I really don't understand the man. Um, it, it, it's um, well, whether he was well, given some Kool Aid or something. I, I don't get it. How do you account for Obama permitting uh, those uh, brokers, in some cases, to individuals took home eight hundred thousand dollars worth of commissions out of Bear Stearns and Sachs and all that? I think it's the corrupting influence of, of money in politics. Obama hoped that he would be able to get uh, some <coughs> slice of the pie of campaign contributions from that source. Uh, and so we have uh, that's no why we, religious or spiritual insights. Okay. I, I, I do. We've gone completely do. far from the top. Up. Absolutely. It better be on religion or Yes, spiritual. it will be. Okay. You no, you're, 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 you're not a very good uh, monitor on no, this. Well, yeah, but you guys you're, you're 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 These guys go off the wheel yeah. and, and then you, you, yeah, you say there's no... I want to go back on... You know I'm the Christian. I have something to say. I didn't get a chance. So am I. And this is what I want to say, is that, you know, the theological term for greed is avarice. That covers a lot of other And, you know, that's a desire for things. And I want to say that, yes, it's true that only having desire for external things is a problem. But at the same time, uh, one of the things that, you know, Jesus says in the Beatitudes is blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, I usually hold yeah, that out as that, yeah, as you say spiritual things, but the thing is, it's this, that if you have things in your possession and it's more than what you need, you have an obligation to share that with others. And I was uh, listening to things Why? like uh, that come out on Bill Gates. Why should you have to share with others? Because he says Please, so. Let me, Jesus says so. Let me say yeah. Yeah. And Bill That's Gates smart. is a guy that is extremely wealthy, and believe it or not, I don't know if you've heard this or not, but he's working on a project to come out with a waterless to toilet, toilet yeah. for third I world countries that. because water is scarce. And Warren Buffett, toilet. he's involved with uh, a lot of uh, philanthropic uh, things, and his son is into like... He goes around the world and he goes to countries where they have trouble. He's a farmer type in the country here in the U.S. And he goes to other parts of the world and he, he finds, talks to them about where they have trouble growing certain crops or whatever. And he, he works with them and tries to come up with a seed that will work in their part of the world. And uh, so these are people that have accumulated wealth, but at the same time they're reaching out... Uh, to the underprivileged, to the neglected, to whom and much trying is given, to do much something. is required. Right? And last night, I, I found out this Matt Damon, this actor, is involved with uh, trying to get water uh, uh, available to, in places around the world. You know, and uh, and a lot of and athletes it, too. But yeah. is there any way we can get more people like that? More, uh, yes, right. More Bill Gates in the world? Is there anything mm -hmm. we can do about yes, it? Yes, I think so. Come from within. Trying to convince Oprah Winfrey. What's that? <laughs> 
The only way I think the only way we're going to be able to change the prevalence of human behavior is to change the contemporary culture. And that's only done through grassroots movement, uh, through personally it's done I think to the changing of grassroots culture. You mean change capitalism? No, not change capitalism, but change the values that, that the country represents. I mean, today we got, today we have a culture of greed, a, a culture of the me generation. And I, I, I really think that a lot of the problems in the major contemporary culture are a result of the 60s radicals. Your radical hippies are now your radical corporation leaders. Right. No, they sold out. They became oh, yuppies. Well, they sold out because they were they were able they were able to conform to the standards of their time. You need what really has to happen is I'll put it like this, okay? If you remember Alexis de Tocqueville in his book Democracy in America, it is not the wisdom is not found in the great institutions of America, nor is it found in the in the great why ways and why ways but i'll tell you that wisdom is found on sunday mornings in the church it is found in the pri in the privacy the, the principles and the primacies that are exalted by the american religious faith and it is proven by the fact that people who are in those churches and try to live by that faith that's exhibited in those churches i'm paraphrasing of course because i can't remember the exact quote but it is because of that very system of voluntary religious freedom that people were able to go in and perform their own faith, whether it be Muslim, Jewish, or Christian, that really saw, got the values of the country as a whole on track. There's always people who are going to be off, but that's what it's going to take to really change the country. So are you preaching a religious... Uh, what I'm maybe not so I much mean, a, I mean, maybe not not so much a re, not so much a religious revival, but perhaps maybe more of a chance for honesty and 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 living by your principles. So, but you didn't give any credit to Peace Corps or AmeriCorps. No, there's there's your spiel. And that, those there, are pe those are young people that reach out uh, yeah. with American values to other parts of the country and the world. Uh huh. You know, to and, make things better. And I, I, I am saying, that's we need more of that. You know, we, we just need to get the spirit of human beings back to being human beings. Yeah, but people Be have been saying that for, I mean, right. been, it's, it's, a lot of people have said, if one would just follow the scriptures, live by a lot of people do. Right? Think, uh, yeah, but a, lot of, but, a lot of, but a lot of people don't. And but I, I also know really too that the only real way that that like, changes, that people's lives are changed, if they do do so, to is to get a good successful church going. And I've seen a lot of them where I'm at. A lot of okay, church. two spiritual insights here. Let's just finish with the last. <laughs> <laughs> the last but it, but it will it will solve. It, it's I one way of solving mind. the problem. Well, okay. You when you're dealing with sin, you got to repent. Yeah. I, th I think everyone has to do it. But. You repent by giving everything away. No. The last paragraph is on the bottom of the third page. I made a mistake or my printer made a mistake. Why don't we just read that last paragraph, baby? Okay. And we got to get out of here by 9 at the latest. All right. As many as you hear now, I am a firm believer in a modified form of platonic things that are intangible. They give us the best argument against greed, for they tell us that we... Then when we go for as many as you, oh, wait a minute. When we go for materialism, yeah. we lose materialism. Like we love. lose intangibles like love, even self-love. My criticism of Machiavelli's prince, a greedy person really does lose much in the way of such fundamental intangibles as goodness, justice, and truth because he is dishonest with himself. A greedy person blinds his vision to the good. We must love intangibles with our whole heart, as Plato insisted. Materialism gives us little meaningfulness, as shown in the three lottery wins in Bond Stronghold, cinematic masterpiece, Read. It leaves a spiritual emptiness or vacuum 
the greedy person ends up living a quiet and happy life because his entire self is out of balance. The very sad downfall of Japis can be seen in two current movies, The Queen of the Versailles and Arbitrage. Starring Buddhist Richard Gere, by the way, Buddha's second noble truth of life is that we suffer so much on earth because our desires to have things that we cannot be attached to or take with you as you can a life of integrity. Very sorry, but I'm all about a space of time. My apologies to Gordon Gekko and Ivan Bosky. Well, Ivan Bosky said the same thing as Gordon Gekko did, mm -hmm. and is good. He said it at commencement at some big school. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of this or that solution that um, that the greed is not really satisfactory, it's certainly not fulfilling, although a greedy person would be happy, you think they'd be happy? Well, the lottery winners aren't happy. There's been a study that um, after you reach a certain um, level of income, about $70,000, that uh, increased income does not uh, result in greater happiness. Um, At least by, as judged by people when they're asked, you know, certain questions in the study. Uh -huh. uh, the same page here. So, um, what we have, you know, what we see is that um, uh, as people acquire more things and more capital, become, you know, more capitalistic, it's a lot it more doesn't of a make hassle them happy. Correct. It's a lot more of a hassle. Well, what we have is, as human beings, um, we, we know that there's a great variety of um, um, genetic uh, heritage that we have, um, that we've inherited over time, and uh, we know that there's a, a large variation of, of all traits um, and a certain percentage of traits that um, have to do with greedy behavior or um, aggressive behavior, shall we say, and um, amongst a certain percentage of the population and a percentage of the population that are more altruistic, that have a more an interest in not only their own selfishness but in uh, what's good for the clan, or the group, or the nation, or humanity, a, a certain number of altruistic people exist, and there seems to be a balance between these. Uh, and it does come from genetics to some extent, although uh, we also have that added uh, layer in our, in our humanity of being influenced by ideas, by, by reading, and by being influenced by our environment, by how we're brought up, by our, by our, by our. But we do have a selfish gene, wouldn't it? Though? We have selfish genes. We definitely, our, our genes essentially are selfish, even the ones that are altruistic. The altruistic ones want to preserve themselves. Yeah. They don't really have. They're. It's not like they're magical thinking. I don't want to uh, present it as magical thinking, but uh, what we have is a mechanism. Evolution has created this mechanism whereby uh, a percentage of our population is greedy, a percentage of our population is altruistic, and a percentage is in between. And there is a there is a complicated dynamic going on in that, which we don't completely understand. Science uh, is investigating that. Uh, science is determining. Uh, more details about human behavior as we go forward. I'll be at the very thing There's, that I do, that very thing that I I want to bring up something that, you know, this paragraph, uh, this oh. Buddha concept about uh, having things that uh, we cannot take with us. Okay. There was a play called it, You Can't Take It With You, and I just can't remember, I think I saw it once, and it seemed like to me that there were these characters in there, and they were just doing their kinds of things, and they were oblivious to, you know, having to provide for themselves or the affairs of, of, of uh, economic growth or whatever, and they were just happy as larks. Did anybody see that play? Yeah, that's a famous play from the 30s and was sort of anti-capitalist an, anti and anti-materialistic. Uh, I don't remember the author. It could have been, it could have been Kaufman or Hart, I'm not sure. Hmm? No, 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 no. But um, it was a, it was a famous play, and it, it, it espoused that idea that happiness is not just based on material possessions. Yeah, and it was a counter to the uh, depression. It was. Uh, um, but didn't the Beatles say happiness is a warm gun? Huh? <laughs> money can't buy me love, too. Yeah, that's true. Well, the it, it helps. <laughs> I don't People, think so. <laughs> if you can't provide for a woman. Well, some women are not interested in greed. I mean, not all. 
Yeah. Not, they're that's not all gold the diggers. The marriage arose, you know, that uh, yeah, right. yeah. Well, women, uh, women, yeah. yeah. many are. Nine There's a percentage, right. probably seventy yeah. percent. Most, most of the good-looking ones yeah. like money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, right. It, there might be a linkage so between um, um, genes that give rise to women's beauty and and greed. There might be a linkage. I don't know. That's for science. All the more reason to make money. Oh, well, that, that unfortunately is an incentive to, to men to do that. Um, well, these are very, very unfortunate. Very <laughs> the, 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 what, physical uh, traits. Our, our, our genes control a lot of our behavior. It might be as much as 70 or 80 percent. But environment has something to do with that, too. I want to balance. Not as much, I don't think. It, it, I, that's why I said 70 or 80 percent. Okay. I, I don't know what exactly that is. But I believe 80, but manipulate the, the genes, can engineer humans, get rid of the selfish genes, you know? Well, I, I don't nice. think I'm completely determined by my genes. I'm determined a lot by um, mm. the, what I learned from my parents and my teachers as you I was growing up. Free, I think a lot right. people are most people are, in a, most people are not, um, they haven't broken outside right. of those influences you know, then they, the bad ones the environment brings up, unless they have strong good ones. Right. But you know, it's 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 really it's it's not you're not totally determined by your genes. I mean, look, George Romney was a good man by all accounts, but look what a horrible man his son is. Look what a terrible person. What do you his son mean is. he's a horrible man? He's a horrible man. Didn't you well, haven't you seen the recent? Video I've tape? seen uh, the recent tapes, but I can a guy run for president be a horrible man? Okay. <laughs> because the Republicans only had horrible candidates. To pick. Why is he a horrible man? He's a horrible, yeah. horrible Church person. All, yeah. all right. The evil horrible. things he did to throw people out Gentlemen, of their jobs. Gentlemen, uh, let's smile for the camera and say goodbye. He intentionally did. Smile for the camera and say goodbye, gentlemen. Intentionally destroyed their pension. Bye, camera. He intentionally did that. He destroyed children and health care. They were working for they were a profitable enterprise. It was horrible things he did. Horrible things he did. And then to say something like he's writing off 37% of the population of, of the country and not even realizing that they weren't paying income taxes because many of them were seniors, many of them were veterans. It's a